Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. And welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. We are welcoming back one of my favorite guests, Aaron Freeman. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about Aaron. Aaron is um, he's a writer, producer, sci science commentator, and funny man, right? And he's former host of both NPR. NPR's weekly talk show, Metropolis, and WTTW Chicago, and tomorrow, it's WTTW Chicago tomorrow. With Elizabeth Brackett. And it's a weekly science and health half hour magazine co-host and of Chicago Brain Buddies. You have so much here that I, I have to figure out what you are. I'm so old. I mean, I am oh my so goodness. so old. Every time I see Aaron, he has another title beyond his name. So Aaron, your new thing is how does science make us happier? How studying neuroscience has a special role in making us happier? Yes. And how does it affect all of us. Yes. That's a really long title. I never figured out how science and and co being a comedian and science and uh, how that works together. I, I you're going to have to tell our viewers what this is all about. This is a new thing that you've been doing for how long now? Well, I've been working with the as the artist in residence for the Chicago Con Society Council on Science and Technology since uh, 2015. But, you know, the, the science and comedy are not our old, old pals. Some of the best scientists around have been some of the funniest. Richard Feynman, the great physicist, theoretical physicist, was a very funny guy. Uh, and there are a lot, I mean, there have been a lot of really funny guys. The um, um, Murray Gelman, the founder of, uh, who discovered quarks, once famously said in the 60s, before quarks had been observed, he said, quarks exist. What the are quarks? Quarks are the fundamental particles, the current uh, best candidate for the fundamental quark particles of nature, the smallest individual particle into which you can break something down. And Murray Gilman said in the 60s, quark exists. The fact that experimentalists have not found them is not my problem. <laughs> so you, yeah. so it is kind of funny because you never think of science and comedy as, as one. You know, I would never put the two of them together. And yet, we were talking about earlier when we were at the Bluegrass today. Um, Thanks for lunch. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And how it kind of goes together. You know, we were talking we were talking a lot about politics today, and you were really putting it together in a science way. And um, I, I, how do you think of this? How do you, how do you know when did you, well, we're going to talk about politics, but well, before we do, how did you figure out that studying like neuroscience has a special way of making you happier? How did you really put together the science thing and comedy and find a group that, that so the surrounds French, you? In the French they say, tu uh, comprends et tu pardonnes. To understand all is to forgive all. And specific, the specific role that neuroscience has to play in making you a happier person is that when we think of one another as just a collect of, of biological entities, we are apes. We have we are, the, are subject to the same neurochemical, physiological, hormonal drives and vulnerabilities as every other ape that has ever lived. When you think about human beings that way, there is there are no bad guys. There are no bad apes. They're just apes behaving the way apes do. And that 
makes it easier to forgive people, and that will make you happier. Well, then you should go on as another political group, because then people realize that we're apes, and the reason we're all angry at each other has no, there's no reason to be. Because if apes, do apes get angry? Yeah, at the, as you famously talk about the bonobos, they get angry all the time, and they settle it by having sex. <laughs> wow. That's I how knew they that, settle it. I knew that Aaron's going to be a really you good guest today. Out. You brought yes. up the bonobos at lunch. I'm just saying that. Right. So they, apes absolutely get angry. Some get Some apes get angry, deal with it by fighting and biting and smashing. Other apes make love, not war. Then why, then, you know, we, 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 then we talked about today, you know, we, and we, and if you, I mean, you use, uh, your, your, you list yourself as the excitable, uh, excitable ape? Uh, on Twitter, excitable ape, that's right, excitable ape, and oh. on Facebook, excitable ape. Okay, yes. then when Rosie, o, that, that was uh, Rose Ann, not Rosie, but Rose Ann yes. Barr uh, called Valerie uh, Jarrett, she was calling her, I don't know if it was an ape, a monkey, or what she was saying. She or, said Muslim Brotherhood plus Planet of the Apes equals VJ. Okay, right, okay. So why did everybody get so alarmed and so upset and she got fired if we're all apes? We're calling, you, we're calling an ape an ape. We're, you know, as far as you're concerned, that's who we are. Well, the primatologist, the great primatologist, uh, Robert Sapolsky, uh, did work with baboons in Kenya. And the Kenyans were deeply offended at the notion when he would say, that this baboon is my cousin. I gotta take care of it, it's my cousin. And he said, it's not your cousin, that is an ape, it's a baboon. So some people are sensitive to the notion that human beings are apes. They don't like the idea. They, they like to think of us as higher than the apes, a little less than the angels. Others of us are very comfortable and embrace our ape nature as a way to not be mad at the other apes. But it's almost like, I think people are different. It's the kind of thing. Some people have different opinions and react differently to things. Yeah, because, I mean, here a, was it ABC that fired her. For, yep. And she really just didn't, you know, she was just... Maybe she was trying to be funny, or she was half asleep. She was on Ambien. Uh, she's, you know, she says she's not. She's uh, in her family. She has um, African American cousins and family members that are married to African American uh, well, men and women. Make and and she felt that it, it wasn't, you know. But you make the point. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, so I talked about this on my uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, Science Today. And as a Chicago, when I think about it, you think about any issue, how do you science it? How can you apply uh, uh, reason to it? How can you ask questions that will help you better understand the phenomenon? Roseanne Barr, if you think about it as a Chicago, and I think about economically, the science of economics, we at the University of Chicago, uh, we are very proud of how many Nobel Prizes in economics that the University of Chicago has won. And in terms of this was an example, in my view, of... Roseanne Barr's example of Adam Smith's invisible hand. She made a statement and the market spoke. The executives, the people in charge of making money at ABC looked at the market, particularly the crucial 18 to 35 demographic, and saw that they are wildly intolerant of quasi, of, raci of racially charged or racially insensitive comments. And simply as a matter of capitalism, they said, well, this is a crucial demographic. They don't like it. She's gone. But why was it? Why was it? Why is it seen as racially um, unacceptable? Many if we people are, don't like it, referring to Negroes as apes. But it's white people. But but according to I, I, science, I, white people are apes as well. I understand. I'm just telling you that you asked the question. And I, yeah. I'm I'm not one of those people. Maybe you stayed I in the sun. Your people. group stayed in the sun longer. That's why your skin changed. We, you know, we stayed in the shade. But we're all if we're all apes, we're all apes. True. I, I'm not one of those people who objects to, uh, I, I, I proudly embrace my primate reality. So, what ha why do we look different than the apes? What happened? How did that come about? Beats me. We, we just, uh, we all look different. Do you think we just evolved a little bit differently? We were all the same. We had the fur all over and... Uh, 
Well, we still have the fur all over. Ours is not as thick, uh, yeah. except on the top as some of the other right. apes. So, you know, if you would have gotten on that show or you would have talked to somebody there uh, in ABC and really talked about your opinion and how, uh, how science we are, we are one of the same, you know, maybe Roseanne would not have lost the oh, show. Oh, no, absolutely. She, she should definitely have lost the show, unequivocally, again, just as a matter of pure economic sciences. There's a crucial demographic of people 18 to 35 who are wildly intolerant of anything that smacks of racial uh, stereotyping, you would they think that people that you would you would think that people that age has more tolerance than than the people of my age group. They're not. They're, they're not. They're, they're a lot less tolerant of racism, like even the whiff of it. Like where I'm much more tolerant of racism than my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm old. I, you know, I've had to deal with it for a long time. Yeah. I don't get upset as my old buddies say. I don't argue about whose white people are better. You know, I'm old. I don't, it doesn't bother me. But my daughter's generation, are they're much less tolerant. They expect you know, the stuff that we fought for as, uh, as old people. They, uh, they, that's where they start. They start there, and they want to make the world better from there. They want to make the world less racist from there. So do, you, do you think that works? Do you think they're working? Is in, it causing in, in more the, division? In the or? time of you, it's in your and my lifetime, the world has become far less racist, far yeah. more kind and tough. So apparently right. it does work. Right. It didn't get less racist because people were kind of going, hey, do, 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 got racist, yeah. less racist because people got into the streets, demanded, screamed, yelled. And like people do for science, people advocate for science, they advocate against the, you know, the policies of certain, certain policies that seem to deny science. And that's part of what the Chicago Council on Science and Technology tries to do, is to promote a more science literate, a more science, and, and a part of that is to, is to remind people that science can make you happier. In addition to giving you an excuse, empirically based excuses to forgive people, science also gives you an entree into the awe of everyday life. For example, yeah, right example. here, on this here, this table. We've got two okay. tables right here. We've got the table of nature and the table of physics. The table of nature is solid, mm -hmm. right? But if the physics physicists will always tell you, it's not solid, it's a cloud. This is a cloud of atoms. It's only the repulsion of electromagnetic forces that prevents my hand from passing through it. And, if you, and not only is it a cloud of electrons, but this table, this mug, that paper, you and me, all of the, and all the equipment in here, Every physical, everything physical in our world was born at the center of a first generation star that blew up and spewed its guts out into the world and that those guts later became the heavy elements that are made of which we are all composed. Which it's, if you think about it, this freaking wonderful and awesome and totally cool. But how does and that's it, how it makes you happier. So it makes you happier by... Give you a chance to experience awe. Everybody is happier when they experience awe, when they can see things that blow their minds and force them to reconsider their, their place in the universe and in the world. When you, for example, if you're at a basketball game or a sporting event and you see somebody does an incredible play, and you go, did you see that? Did you yeah. see what he did yeah. there? Yeah. You see that? It makes us awe, right. makes us pro-social. Right. And there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of study about that, that when we experience something amazing, we want to share it with somebody. Right, exactly. When you're in love, you want the whole world to know. But now we're in a situation now where everybody seems to be so angry, so unhappy. So it, it just, what, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, even in my own family, how, you know, if you post something that they don't like, oh, my God, you get a handful. You know, I, I've been getting a handful for my own son. You know, you know, Mom, how could you post such a well, thing? But again, I mean, I how, why is everybody so so angry. Why can people see that? Hey, you know, even if you, you even if you don't say, even we go back to our president. If you like him, fine. If you don't like him, in in a couple of years, you could change. You know, you don't have to be stuck on being so unhappy. Make the best of something, even if it's something that isn't what you want or something that that you're not. For or it's not in agreement with you, you can always find something positive. Oh yeah, but I mean, but uh, uh, the opposition to tyrants is servants service to the gods. 
It's great to fight against. I mean, it's great to be a part of the resistance to the Death Star. You saw Star Wars, right? Yes. I yes. mean, you want to be a part of the resistance. You don't want to be a part of the Empire. You want to be a part of the resistance. We always, uh, we always identify with the, uh, the, 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 the downtrodden fighting against the big evil death, the, 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 the machine, the, the Matrix. So, that the, so you're so saying that we're always fighting against the person on the top. They, we're always for the underdog. Like when, maybe when yeah, you... I mean, we certainly when, like that. Yeah, we want to be a part. I mean, somebody's saying that is the best In the baseball, the too. Re remember the we underdog? The Cubs. I was a Cub fan my whole yeah. life. You want to talk underdogs? I'll talk about underdogs, okay? Yeah, 100 and how many years? 100 and... 103, I think it was. With whatever. It was 100 and some years yep. that they weren't... Yeah. And everybody was so excited. I know when I went to different states, people, even though the Cubs weren't their team, but to root for the Cubs, they were so happy. Yeah. After 100 and some plus years, they won. Yeah. And just this year, the, the baseball team, would, I think... They're not I, so great this year. Yeah. Not as not as. No, I mean, last... Who won last year? Uh, it wasn't uh, the Cubs. It wasn't the Cubs. No. But it was a team that never hadn't won in many, many yeah. years. Yep. So people, you're saying, really like going for the underdog. Yeah, you, you mentioned about making the best of uh, the current administration. And the best, and it's great to be a part of a historical movement. To, if you believe that you're a part of a historical movement to resist fascism in America, that's a great thing to do. That's the best thing you could possibly do. That's the most patriotic thing you can do. And that's, you know, then that is the perspective of the people. Well, if you who, think of it as fascism. Yeah, that, that, I mean, and that and is the perspective yeah. of, the, of many of the people who right. oppose uh, right. our beloved President Bone Spurs. <laughs> what did you say? President Bone Spurs. What's that? We had five draft deferments because of Bone Spurs. Oh. So oh. some people call them. Oh. Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth calls them actually Cadet Bone Spurs. Oh. But I'm a comedian, so I like jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, I see you too. <laughs> and we were talking about yes. the. Oh, we were talking about something else that people were. So, inter yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. So the, uh, it's another thing about comedy. So they say that um, the greatest scientific discoveries uh, are accompanied not so much as by, by eureka, as by hmm, that's weird. So that they, they say that man laughs because he's the animal who can tell the difference between the way things are and the way things should be. So they both, in that, uh, they both science and comedy uh, relish in the odd and the unusual and the unexpected. See, so that's how it goes together. When did this group get together? How did they, you know... Chicago how Council on Science and Technology uh, just had our 10th uh, anniversary. Uh, gala. Um, uh, professor, uh, Dr. Alan Shrisheim, former director at uh, of, uh, Argonne National Laboratories, recognized and believed uh, some uh, more than a decade ago that there needed to be some way for citizens to be able to interact with the real scientists and that we are better served by having, getting our science information from practitioners of science than by, say, comedians. So C2ST does programming that brings real scientists into bars and restaurants and, and lecture halls and have them, have them talk to regular people. And so by them talking to, quote unquote, regular people. C civilians. Civilians. How do they, how, what, what is it that they do? How do they put everything together for themselves? Like, if there is, a, say, science, how do they see it? Why do they want to be with the regular people? What do they get out of their information? Here, these guys are really, they're the brightest guys, you know. And, and women. Yeah, and a lot of women. women. They won Nobel women. Peace Prizes. They probably, you know, they've been, they, they probably are really um, amazing. Yeah. Science and lectures and yep. these are people that uh, and they want to let people know for example so my partner in the chicago brain buddies that we do for the chicago society for neuroscience uh peggy mason is uh, she studies rats and pro-social behavior of rats and long story short that rats generally hate being in the middle of the room they hate lights but you can put if you if you trap a rat uh, in the middle of a room with uh, in a little cage Another, another rat who will, does not want to be there will go into the middle of the room, into the light, to rescue really? a trapped fellow rat. Yes. And so, that this, so she, and when Peggy finds this out, that, you know, that it gives an indication that helping 
pro-sociality, the desire to help another in distress, is a part of not just our fundamental nature, mm -hmm. but of m fundamental mammalian nature. And you want to let people know that, so that, uh, as the Jews say, lo b'shemayim, it's not in heaven. Kindness is not a thing that's in heaven. It's so fundamental, so basic to life, to mammalian life, at the very least, that even rats manifest itself, manifested. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of uh, people put on Facebook a lot of different animals. You know, like say there was a dog that held a cat that was, uh, you know, looked like it was sick or was caught, and they'll help the other animal. They won't eat the other animal. They don't try to bite it, but they actually try to help it. And it, again, it, remind, it helps to remind us that we as apes, as animals, as members of the biological world, of members in good standing of the biological world, it is within our nature to be kind and helpful toward one another. And in t as you point out, in times when things can seem like uh, people are not at their best, that it's, it's useful to be reminded that we are in fact, we remain kind and generous and decent, just like our our. our chimpanzee cousins and our ratty second cousins. Yeah, I think people have to be, I think I, I, I went on Facebook and I, I showed you an article that I saw and how people should, just because you voted for Trump or just because you voted for Hillary Clinton, we're still people and we still love each other and it, just because you, you don't agree with somebody's politics or you don't agree with somebody's, uh, you know, we should still be kind to each other. When and, they say that and, uh, kindness is always in our power, even when fondness is not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may not like what they did, but you, you know, sometimes you we, may think they're a hideous human being. Yeah, or sometimes we, even our own children, we may not like them at times, but we always love them. You know, you cannot like somebody, but yet you can love them too, especially when it comes to our family. That's true. You I'm know? with you. I I like mine. Yes. So how does comedy? How could we use comedy more to um, help people out of this situation that they're in right now, that everybody's going around with a long face and, and anger. Do you find that to be the case? Yes, yes. I, I, you know, I do a current event roundtable discussion group. Oh, my God. They come in with this, you know, they're ready. It's almost like they're ready. If I had two of swords in each of their hands, they would be ready for the kill. I mean, it's really... I mean, I, think, I would I say would the say majority that. of them are like this right now. And I'll go to other groups, too, and they're all attacking one another. It's like an attack over attack over attack. I like to see maybe some comedy, some science, something to maybe uh, we could do to help these people out so they won't be so angry. It's not the world I live in. I live in a world filled with kind, decent, honorable people. Where, I do where, not, uh, are we in two different worlds? I, I believe, see, everybody, if you start talking about the news, yeah. which is designed to push your buttons, but once you get past that, that's not what people actually care about. You the know, stuff people actually care about is their own health, but there their are family. People that are, I know, but people are listening 24 7. There are people that are listening to the news and all the media. I mean, every station being. Uh, either uh, w, uh, MSNBC, w, you know, or CNN, or Fox News. Everyone has, I mean, they have opinions, and they have a right to all their opinions. Watch Science Today on YouTube, Science Today on, uh, on Facebook. You go to the Chicago Council on Science and Technology website, it, learn they, about the latest right. in science and technology. That'll make you feel better. Yeah, they need to turn off the more other More science, news. more happy. More science, more science, more happy. Are you think that they're designing the media right now to push to, the buttons? To it's, push the buttons. It's no, no, not now. That's what they do. But this is more than ever. That's Why are they doing that? According to your, you know, ideas and all the media that we have, the ever, media. all media of which we are aware is designed to sell stuff. Okay. That's what it's for. It's to sell stuff, and you sell stuff by by getting people's attention, and that's perfectly fine and wonderful. Again, what we do is we try to engage. We believe, and it has a bunch of good evidence of that, that when people engage their intellects as opposed to their amygdala. They have to engage their, their frontal cortices as opposed to the, uh, the, the, the kind of lizard brain. They are less likely to be angry at one another. So how do they do that? You, how do you, you get watch, them to do You it? watch the Chicago Brain Buddies, and my buddy Peggy and I, we talk, we look at the news, and we analyze it from, a, uh, from various scientific perspectives. Like, say, for instance, for example, as they say, the coat. Uh, go back go to Melania's coat. Sure. There's a very interesting, there's a very interesting um, 
rule. In science, there's a rule called the Occam's Razor that says that the simplest answer is usually the best. Yeah, analogous to uh, um, Lomelanius' code, there's a rule called Hanlon's Law. Uh, so, you know, you wonder why would she do this, you know? Yeah, why would, why would you annoy people? And even more so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Hamlin's Law says, never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. So, it is, an, uh, it is the, the kindest and least annoying way, at least crazy-making way to think about it is, it was a bad, it was a mistake. It was a, uh, a, a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> but do you think she knew what she was doing, or she just happened it to have the, the coat? You know, some, I have a sweater that I always keep in the car, yeah. and you know, I just throw it on because sometimes I go to restaurants that are too cold with air conditioning. Sometimes I use it because it's raining, and I keep it in the car. I don't, even, you know, I don't even know what it says. I don't think it says anything. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if it was one of these jackets that she just had, or she was cold. She threw it on and wasn't thinking. I am no good at mind reading. <laughs> I totally stink at mind reading. I say them say that to look well, apply Hanlon's law is a way to look at it that makes it so that there's no bad guys. And I don't believe in bad guys. Okay. In, sci in science, there's no bad people. There's just behavior. So she what is this behavior? How do you analyze this behavior? Do you want to change this behavior? How could you help? You know, uh, that, that's all there's to it. There's no good. There ain't no. As what do we say? The grapes of wrath. There ain't no sin. There ain't no virtue. There's just stuff that people do. Yeah, and then the media is playing it up like it was the, you know. Because they, they got to make money. So it's all about the money. Ratings and money. Yeah. So it's, it's good. Thing Capitalism is good. Because, it's, not, it's not new. Because if it said anything different, it wouldn't have been. This was, the, this was the meat that they needed sure. to put on the media to cause all the friction that's going on. They don't want to cause friction. They just want you to look. They don't care. No, but the more friction they cause, then they want to turn in the next day. Hey, maybe they're, they're going to find something else and, if they and could keep it going. If they could give you 24-hour cat videos and make a trillion dollars a day, they would give you cat videos. And people get people that I mean it's a business here. They make they're working here. So ever all the stations, it's all about the money and all about the business and all this stuff, probably in the politics right now, everything that they're doing is really about selling was their there, stations. Was there some time when it wasn't the case? It didn't, it didn't seem as bad. It seemed like most stations were handling the same thing. It was like I remember when Channel Two, Channel Five, Seven, and Nine were basically um, apologists for segregation. They no, no, they were like John Cameron <laughs> Swayze, and yeah, uh, they were just ignoring. You know, like they were ignoring all the Jim yeah. Crow stuff. They were ignoring all the white beating. They were ignoring all the gay yeah, they, beating. So they were all saying the same thing. Yeah, just and nobody was never causing any, the brutality nobody in the corner. Nobody was causing any friction. There they, you go. They were just. You know,